Let's do it, Miss Hannah. Uh, which means she's in Hawaii. 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 She's in
play ball. We give a big round of applause to the Bonners Ferry High School Band. Just so I can be the first example, I'm going to make a correction. That is the Bonners Ferry High School Jazz Band. <laughs> I'd like to welcome everybody to today's ceremony. 2018 graduates are very excited to be here. Thank this community for supporting them throughout the last 12 years of their education. It is an honor to welcome the senior class president, Cassandra Steen. I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. Plus the fact of getting up here in front of you all terrified me. I was nervous, scared. I wanted to make this memorable, but I didn't have a clue of what to say. So here goes nothing. <laughs> Isn't it funny how day by day, nothing changes? But when you look back, everything's different. By C.S. Lewis. It doesn't seem that long ago, we stood with our Hannah Montana, our high school musical backpacks on. Cartoon lunchbox in hand, smiling or crying for the endless first day of school pictures. We learned our ABCs and one, two, threes, and everything seemed easy. Our only worries were what we would do at recess, and in the blink of an eye, we were stepping foot in middle school. Here, we learned our parts of speech. I'm sure most of us could sing them right now. Thank you, Mrs. Hinthorn. And we learned all about a Midsummer's Night Dream. Yet, what we didn't realize is that within those three years, our class joined together as one. Whether it was creating cardboard boats to race across Snow Creek, or screaming together on roller coasters at Silverwood, or even sitting together in that hot gym as Grandma Shar gave us our farewell speech at eighth grade promotion. We developed close bonds and we created memories with each obstacle we faced. Finally, we made the big jump to high school. These last four years seem like four days. Within these four years, we had to worry about bigger things like due dates, test scores, and college. But at this very moment in time, I can't tell you the distance formula between two points, but I can tell you about the time we beat the seniors in Peach Boys and sophomores. And I can't tell you about my great Gatsby final, but I can tell you how amazing it was to suit up in blue and white and make a mark for Bonners Ferry in softball. I can go on and on about how amazing it was to see us come together as one and portray our individual skills to create one of the most impressive homecoming floats Bonners had ever seen. It has always been the smaller things that were actually the bigger things within my life. And these are the things I remember. And you are the people I'll carry with me. Even though we aren't in our cute backpacks from kindergarten or singing songs from middle school, we are still surrounded by the people that helped us through it all. I'm forever thankful for you all, friends, family, this community, and all you have done to help us grow and be there for everything. So the class of 2018, I speak to you now. Tomorrow will bring a new journey for us, but today marks an end of a chapter in our lives. No longer will we suit up in blue and white with our teammates or wander the halls of Bonners Ferry High School. The world is now our hallway, medical centers, office rooms, outdoors, and battlefields will become our classrooms. My hope is that when we reunite down the road, we will have amazing stories to share with one another. My hope is that we become bold and brave, that we live with no regrets. Most of all, my hope is that we, the graduating class of 2018, don't simply focus on the bigger things, that we take time to remember that and enjoy the little things, because those are the things that will make our life big. So here's to us, as we move on to our next chapter, to the class of 2018, I thank you.
Job cast. Might be the last time you ever speak in front of this many people, so good on you. Yeah. <laughs> it is another great distinction of mine to introduce our guest speaker, chosen by the senior class, Mrs. Kim Cravens. to burn books with uh, Honors English. That was a blast. Thank you. And thank you, Cassie, for writing the best eulogy for Fahrenheit 451 I could possibly have ever imagined. It was astonishing, and I shared it with like every staff member. Uh, to your Macbeth skits, which were horrible, and I know that most of you didn't really read any of that play, but it was thoroughly entertaining to watch your skits. So you at least got something out of it, because, you know. To the Family Style Dinners and Foods class, because I've had quite a few in foods class, too. And that's one of my favorite things, was the family dinners. Our field trip and adventure lit last year to Myrtle Falls, where I hiked up and down to the falls four times, because I felt bad for my chaperone. And didn't want them to hike to the falls in the rain, so I did it four times with you guys in Adventure Lit, and that was fun. <laughs> to our Adventure Lit field trip at the Ross Creek Cedars, where I had distinctly said, do not play anywhere near the creek. <laughs> and yet several of you disobeyed me and still played by the creek, and fell into the creek. <laughs> and I probably should have written you up for disobeying me on a field trip, but the sight of Seamus hanging off of a log <laughs> made me laugh so hard I was crying and I had to walk away and then every time I thought I was composed I started laughing again. And I'm sorry that you hurt yourself a little bit, but that's probably one of the best images that will stick with me forever. Seamus hanging off of the log, trying not to fall in, which he still fell in anyway. That was, thank you, Seamus. Uh, so, you know, there are so many other memories and I couldn't possibly stick them into this. I have four years of memories with you guys. Most teachers are only lucky enough to spend one, maybe two years with a class. And I had the strange and unique opportunity to spend almost four years with you guys. The majority of you I got at least three times and some of you all four years. And that's a pretty phenomenal experience and I'm very grateful for that because I may not have that with another class like I had that with you guys. So I got closer to you as a group than I could have possibly imagined. So a few words of advice before we send you on your way today, before you run screaming out of Bonner's Ferry and like me say, I will never ever ever come back to that town and live there again and here I am. Be yourself. Don't let other people change you and don't try to change for other people. And it sounds like cheesy advice, but be yourself. Except for maybe in a job interview and then be at least your appropriate self, because we kind of want you to be productive members of society. 
goodness. So, <laughs> watch your mouths, because I know you guys don't always. <laughs> love. Love wholeheartedly, even if it hurts. Okay? But don't be afraid to let go of that love if it isn't reciprocated. You know, don't, don't spend your, all your time on loving someone if they don't love you back. But when you do love, love wholeheartedly. Take risks. Take risks. Okay? I don't mean like drinking and driving risks, please don't do that. But take risks, you know? Try for the job, even if you don't have the experience for it, because you might end up in a career that you love. So try for it. Don't go, ah, I'm not qualified. Okay? Try for it. Go skydiving if you have a chance. Climb a mountain. Do something that scares you. Because it's in those moments that we're scared that we feel the most alive. Okay? So take risks. Travel. Travel far, travel often. And if you can travel to a foreign country, travel to a place where you don't speak the language. Get out of your comfort zone. Travel. Even if you come back to this area and decide like me, after being, I've been all over the world, okay? I've lived in other places. I chose to come back to Bonners Ferry. I chose to come back to this quiet little life because this is where I wanted to be after 20 years. But travel. It will give you so much perspective and it will give you experiences that you couldn't possibly imagine and you will be better for it no matter where you end up afterwards. Find a career you enjoy and that fulfills you. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have bad days. That doesn't mean that you aren't going to sometimes hate your job. Okay? There are those days that you go home and you're just like, I don't want to go back. But if you wake up every morning dreading going to work, your life is miserable. We spend more time at work than we do usually at home or with our families. So make sure it's something at least tolerable, if not wholeheartedly enjoyable. And lastly, don't forget to enjoy life. It's those simple little pleasures that bring us the most joy most of the time. Not the amazing, huge, astonishing moments like graduation. This goes by in a blip. I barely remember sitting where you guys are sitting. Barely. And I remember I didn't care to be there. I, I was only there because I had to be there. I really didn't want to sit there. It was just like, whatever. This is just another day, and there's a lot of people talking and talking and talking, and just shut up and get out of here, okay? <laughs> so I barely remember this moment. Savor those tiny little itty bitty things. A good meal with good friends. Savor that. You know, a smile from a five-year-old who walks past you even if you don't know him. Savor those little tiny, tiny moments. Those are the ones that make life the richest. I know that sounds a little cheesy, but seriously. And, uh, you know, life isn't always going to be fantastic. It's going to be hard at times, but it's totally worth living. Okay, so remember, eat pie occasionally, or often, if you can. Laugh until you cry, because it's worth it. Right, Seamus? And uh, in the words of Douglas Adams, don't forget your towel. Don't forget your towel. Thanks, Ms. Cravens. Is that what it was? Don't forget your towel. Next up is our valedictorian, Ryan Ray. Hello there. This is so unreal to me, and looking at the sea of familiar faces, it hurts to realize that this is it. This is our last goodbye before time separates us, and I am sad about that fact. A year from now, we'll all be gone, all our friends will move away, and they're going to better places, but our friends will be gone away. If you know me, you know that I'm not always a very linear person. I can articulate what I want to say, yet I still cannot say want I what to say. When I wrote this speech, I tried everything I could to create something comprehensive, because what I have to say matters to me, and I really want to share it. What I wrote is not very comprehensive, and it's not linear, but it is organic. And it is the best way I can say goodbye to the class that went down as one of the greatest. Today, I stand here inspired by my peers, proud to see them wearing their robes, 
and passionate to share the only advice I have to supply. So as I begin, I ask you all to just follow along to my objectively abstract ramblings and pull from my message what you believe it says to you. <laughs> Rivers and Roads. It's a song. Rivers and Roads by the Head and the Heart. It's a song that I leave to my senior class to remember this day by. If you haven't heard it, I hope you'll listen to it sometime soon. It's a beautiful song that so perfectly can share the feelings I have today. Life is so short. For a single moment, we have among our class something that we finally understand. Soon, however, we won't be together, and soon we will all be in a life we don't recognize. It's not a horrible thing leaving home, but it's worth reflecting on. Rivers and Boots. I love music. I really do. It's amazing. You see, music has a strong power to bring people together. Songs have the ability to share a feeling or symbolize some thought. You can learn a lot about someone just by asking them for their favorite song. I imagine most of you have songs tied deep to your heart, songs of heartbreak or past relatives, of times when you're at a point in your lives when you stop talking and start listening. Songs remind us of moments we care about, and they can bring us to tears. Yes, music has power, at least I believe it does, and that's why I'm so passionate about music. Music is my passion. To my fellow students, I urge you to find a passion of your own. Something you care about that will give you meaning in your own life and a sense of direction when everything else is no longer seeming to make sense. Whatever you do, do it with determination. Aliyah Vat once said, you have one life to live. Do your work with passion and give it your best. Whether you want to be a chef, a doctor, an actor, or a mother, be passionate to get the best result. I guess she did well enough pursuing her dreams to get quoted in a high school graduation speech, so I guess it worked out for her. Find what you care about and be an inspiration. You know, inspiration itself is a really fun thing. It's not tangible, but it's powerful. Music is an inspiration. Education is an inspiration. You are all inspirations. And at the end of the day, I too hope to be an inspiration. Inspiration is the fuel that drives passion and gives the body motivation to create. You always seem to hear everyone complaining that they can't find inspiration or that their inspiration is missing, but that should not ever be the case. Becoming inspired, I believe, is the easiest thing in the world. All you have to do to gain inspiration is look at the world and at your life through a different lens, and of course to care about it. Through pain, through achievement, through longing, through guilt, inspiration can all be born. My greatest accomplishment, accomplishments and deepest values can all be attributed to some moment of inspiration, to some humbling second when I realized I needed a change in my own life, that I needed to wake up and make something happen. Let us rewind in time back to a day when you saw your first crush. Or maybe it's more applicable to think about a much more recent crush, a relationship, or even someone to you, the person you intend to marry. I want to think about that moment and that person for just a second. This moment is such a perfect moment, an example of what I want to work, work around because it's a moment when you were inspired. And I know all of you out there can relate with me on this, so don't even pretend to not understand the next part. The love of your life, or so you may have thought at that time, they walk past you in the hallway and they smile. Perhaps you were inspired to smile back at them and they continue to smile as you walk down the hallway. When you saw your crush talking with their friends, maybe you were inspired to meet those friends. When that crush told you that they liked some band or some athlete or enjoyed some book, maybe you became inspired to start playing guitar or run track or read a book. Maybe that crush even made a huge change in your life. They gave you the motivation to become a better, stronger person, and they didn't ever even know it. I know that was the case for me. Life is crazy hard to understand, and you will spend years trying to figure it out, but in your short few years of high school, I know you have gained the experience you need to understand what I'm saying. Inspiration, the kind which burns with the desire to better your own life, can come from anywhere. And it can come quite unexpectedly. I can't create inspiration, nor do I know exactly where it comes from. If I did, I would bottle it up and sell it by the dozen. Then I wouldn't be needing my high school diploma today. No, inspiration can only be obtained by those who open their minds up to trying something new, something creative, and something inspiring. When you choose a passion in life, you will be successful if you can reflect on the works of others and derive your own path. When you choose a passion in your own life, you will be remembered if you can spark inspiration in the lives of others. And when you choose a passion in your own life, you will be a visionary if you can learn to draw inspiration from all things. I regress. Establish a path all your own and find what you care about in life. The high school cliques you once called home end today. Now is your chance to grow. Allow me to back up just a little bit and say what I mean to say. I'm at this podium not to glorify myself or lecture the student body. I'm standing here with the intent to inspire you, my own class, to find passion when you walk away from here today. It is important that you find your own inspirations in your lives because from today on, you are on your own. The amount of motivation you will carry with you throughout your life is the amount that you can supply yourself. And it is your own job to find that motivation. You're what drives the world, and whatever you do, I pray is out of your own passions and desires. Try to keep following me here. Inspiration leads motivation, 
and motivation leads experimentation. Experimentation leads failure, but it also leads creation. And creation is beautiful, fulfilling, inspiring. The creation of new ideas, new hopes, new limits. Creation will give you inspiration. And inspiration will yield more accomplishments and even more inspiration. You can do so much and live a life that is so fulfilling if you only gain a little inspiration. Today, I'd like to thank my friends for inspiring me. I thank my parents, my family, God, everyone. If you have a chance today, take a moment to thank someone who inspires you to be more than you are. Thank that person and let them know how much they've done for you that they might not even realize. To my fellow students, I want you to know that simply because you're leaving high school today does not change a thing in your life. In fact, it changes everything. Everything except for one thing. When you leave today, you will still be you. You'll be a day older, a day wiser, a day closer to buying your own house, but you will still be you. And you will have a choice to find inspiration in the world when you're about to join and the world in which you will create a passion all your own. To my friends, from which I have learned so very much, the class of 2018, I bid thee farewell. We will see each other again, the rivers and roads until then. And to the brave souls taking the next step in their education, the class of 2022, good luck and God bless. Good job, Ryan. And our salutatorians in any fashion they would like to deliver their speech, Rayanne Naylor and Hannah Sims. It's an honor to speak to all of you today. I want to say thank you to all of the people that have helped me achieve my goals and make it to where I am. I am first and foremost thankful to God for my salvation and for giving me so many wonderful and encouraging people in my life. Thank you to my loving parents and brothers for always supporting me in all of my endeavors and pushing me to do my best. Thank you to my sweet church family for investing so much time in me and thank you to my crazy friends for all of our adventures and always encouraging me to step out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Lastly, thank you to all of my hardworking school teachers and educators over the years for all you've taught me. Now, class of 2018, as our high school careers come to an end, I've been reflecting on everything that has happened during our senior year. This year has been full of lasts. Our last first day of school for athletes, the last time wearing a Badger uniform, for performers, the last time performing on the stage in the Booker Auditorium, we had our last homecoming, last prom, all leading up to this moment right here, right now, being the last time we will all be here together as the Bonner Spirit High School Class of 2018. But rather than thinking that today represents a bunch of lasts, I think we should focus on all of the firsts that it means for us. Some of you have been waiting for this day since the first day of school this year. I was not a believer in senioritis until this year, but believe me, it's a real thing, and I do understand. Others of you today have probably shed a few tears knowing this day was coming because maybe you're a little nervous about braving the world on your own. Maybe some of you are excited to see what the college life holds, or maybe you're ready to finally study what you're passionate about. Whatever your mindset is today, let's put all of that aside for just a little while and live in these present moments together. As I was preparing the speech for you all today, I contemplated many different topics. The same question kept coming up, and that is, how could I encourage the class of 2018 as we go out into the world? Honestly, I felt a lot of pressure to be super inspirational, and I don't really know how to do that, but here we go. Looking back, my educational adventure has been a little different than most. It has been just that, an adventure. I can't really say that I've known most of you since the beginning. Most of y'all grew up together. You probably remember your very first day of school together, and most of the people sitting next to you right now are the same ones that you sat next to in first grade. These are the same childhood best friends you made playing t-ball or by joining Boy and Girl Scouts. 
Most of you remember that I probably or probably remember that I moved here two years ago, shortly after sophomore year began, from a town not much bigger than Bonners Ferry called Blackshire, Georgia. Blackshire is in the very southern part of the state of Georgia, very similar to how Bonners Ferry is in the northern part of the state of Idaho. The distance is exactly 2,608 miles, or about a 40-hour drive by car. This move was crazy for me because I had never even visited the Northwest before, and I honestly couldn't have told you where Idaho was on the map of our country. If I'm being completely honest, I was not happy with my parents' decision. I mean, who would be? They were asking me to move to a new school in the middle of my high school career. My whole life was in Blackshire, Georgia. But little did I know that this move has been the most influential part of who I am. Many of you are itching to get out of Bonners Ferry, but it took me coming over 2,000 miles to Little Bonners Ferry to be forever changed. If I would have remained in Georgia for the rest of high school, I would be a very different person. Moving has required me to take opportunities that I would not have in Georgia. In Georgia, I would not have run cross country, joined robotics, become a cheerleader, been so involved in student government or in my church youth group. I would not have gotten a scar on my leg from climbing up the rock wall to Myrtle Falls because my friends told me that there was no trail. And there was trail. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have tried elk or ran into a bear at an early morning cross country practice. I would not have begun my adventure in the performing arts and I certainly would not have discovered the passion that I have for teaching vocal performance. Moving here has not just given me these materialistic opportunities, but has also given me the opportunity to meet some really wonderful people. So in a way, I guess you could say I've been blessed times two. I can honestly say my life would be incomplete without y'all. I have made so many sweet friendships. Y'all have allowed me to come in and join your class and laugh and cry and love and grow with all of you, and for that, I'm so grateful. Similarly to how my life changed two years ago when I moved across the country, all of our lives are about to change, drastically. For 12 years, we've relied on our parents, guardians, mentors, teachers, and many others to guide us and to help us make our decisions. And after today, we have to take charge of our own lives and make our own decisions. One of the most important decisions, in my opinion, being choosing to find joy and blossom wherever you're planted in life. Life is full of so many opportunities, so many setbacks and detours. I urge you to take advantage of every single experience you face. Whether you plan on leaving Bonners Ferry, going to college, joining the workforce of the military, or getting married and having a family, you will always have to make the choice to thrive wherever you find yourself planted. Make every day count. Give to those who are in need and love with your whole heart. Make sure to surround yourself with trusting people, people that will encourage you, that will be honest with you, and that will challenge you. Use every opportunity to grow and influence others and your community around you. Every single per person here today has a purpose, each one capable of doing wonderful things. And by wonderful things, I don't mean you have to set out to end world hunger or even cure cancer. Being successful can sometimes be as simple as making wise, positive decisions as you walk through your everyday life. Someone once said, enjoy the little things in life because one day you will look back and realize they were the big things. You would be surprised at the things you can learn and the experiences you can gain if you embrace opportunities rather than fight them. I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason and that there's a greater purpose in why things happen the way they do. I do not believe that it was by accident that our church here in Bonner Square found my dad all the way in Blackshire, Georgia and asked him to come here to be their pastor. Even though I had no idea as to why me and why Bonner Square, I now realize what a blessing the last two years have been for me here. And just as God has a plan for me here in Bonners Ferry, he also has a plan for you. My cap has the verse Jeremiah 29 11 on it, which paraphrased says, for I know the plans I have for you. This verse is one that is very dear to my heart and is a constant reminder that even when I do not understand why I'm facing certain circumstances, that I know God has a plan for my life and that there are always things that I can learn. Never forget all of the experiences that have made you the person that you are today. Be forever seeking growth and always jump at every opportunity as you begin this new chapter of your life. May you all find joy and inspiration wherever life takes you. And always know that no matter where I end up, I will be forever grateful that I experienced Bonners Ferry High School with all of you. There is nothing that I would change. Know that I am proud of each of you and that you will always be in my thoughts and my prayers. 
May we always cherish in our hearts the last that we have all shared together this past year. Here's to us, class of 2018, and all of the firsts that we had to face. To the class of 2018, congratulations are in order. We've made it and are officially graduating. This may be the end of our education at BFHS, but it is just the beginning of a lifetime of growth and learning. Take a look at the people surrounding us. We wouldn't be where we are without guidance and support from our families, teachers, coaches, neighbors, and mentors. For all of that and more, we are so thankful. <coughs> With some of us furthering our formal education, others enlisting in the military, and another group choosing to enter the workforce, it's safe to say that our paths are all going to change. They're going to look different than everything we've ever done up until this day, and they're going to be different than the person sitting to our left and to our right. No longer are we all moving in the same direction. The question of what our future will look like is one that is filled with unknowns and uncharted possibilities. All of these opportunities, while inspiring and exciting, also come with a certain level of apprehension and fear. Where will I go from here? How will I get to where I want to be? Who is going to be there for me along the way? Ultimately, I would assume that we all hope to be successful in whatever form our future takes. It's also normal to not have a complete idea of what that's going to look like at this point in our lives. All of that will work itself out with the fact that, on some level, we already possess the foundation that we will need to reach success. The years of schooling have ensured us that. Whatever success looks like in your mind, as long as you are willing to put in the effort along the way, you've already learned the basics of how to treat others, tackle our responsibilities, and take on new experiences. Think back to kindergarten. Think back to some of our earliest interactions as classmates. In between the crafts, games, and activities, we were setting up for a lifetime of lessons and knowledge. Even the smallest things are, in some way, going to be an important part of this next chapter. Whatever we go and whatever we do, there are going to be people in our lives. At the end of the day, it will be people, like the ones surrounding us now, which will celebrate our successes and give us a boost whenever we're down. It has been largely the same people here for us up until this point. But as we will soon be going our separate ways, that's all about to change. But that's okay, because even with this class, there was a point where none of us knew one another. The first day of kindergarten, or maybe first grade, was a pivotal point in this class coming together, just like it is for every class. It was a time of reaching out and exploring new friendships. It was a time to grow in every sense. All of those phrases and important lessons, the same one placed on posters hanging from classroom walls, and the expressions parents would remind us of as we left each morning. Say please and thank you, wait your turn, remember the golden rule. We practiced those too as we grew. For many of us, middle school was another time of coming together as a class a less distant one than the start of school. All of a sudden there were lockers and a class schedule and multiple teachers that we saw throughout the day. There were so many of us too, so many options to make new friends. In fact, I remember classrooms without enough desks or textbooks to handle our size. We've shrunk in numbers since then, but the same heart and willingness to share with people we didn't fully know is still there. More than just the people, school has prepared us to handle responsibilities. I have no doubt that we will all be asked to do new things at some point in this next chapter. We've also had plenty of practice approaching such requests. We started out small, but somewhere in between the spelling tests and math fact worksheets, we learned how to take on more responsibility. All of a sudden, we were writing paragraphs and then essays, Everything that once seemed insurmountable, we tackled, conquered, and grew as a result. Not necessarily because we succeeded the first time, but because the experience gave us the courage to try again and later move on to new challenges.
who have taught us how to balance our to-do list and manage our time in between sports and clubs and extracurricular activities. We managed to find space for homework and studying and family. And has even shown us the importance of the balance between work and play. In between the assignments and tests, there were spurts of the unexpected, the 100th day of school celebrations, extra recesses, and days that we wear pajamas and just read. Or more recently, Spirit Weeks and Badger Olympics. Whether it was a new environment, like the play on the first day of school, and our later field trips up to Schweitzer, or a new task, ranging from our first presentation all the way up to senior projects a few months ago, school was all about new things. Although they were intimidating at times, because we didn't know what to expect, we took it step by step and worked our way through. The next step in our journey is going to call upon all of us to continue to do just that. Someone once said, 30 years from now, it won't matter what shoes you wore, how your hair looked, or the jeans you bought. What will matter is what you learned and how you used it. Our futures likely won't require most of us to use the book knowledge we've learned between those four walls, as much as it will require us to apply the skills we gained along the way. Questions like how to approach the unknown, how to ask for help, how to grow as a person, all of these things will be an integral part of the rest of our lives. In a few short months, our class will be spread across the country. No matter where we are or what we are doing, we will never lose the bond of being Bonner Ferry High School's graduating class of 2018. The years we have spent together and all we have learned is only the beginning of everything we are about to accomplish. I wish you all the best as we move forward. After all, every single one of us has already shown we have the ability to succeed. It's now time for us to apply these skills and show the world exactly what we are capable of. Okay, now we need to remember how we practice this, everybody. Good job, Ryan. Good job, Hannah. Great speeches, everybody. Uh, before we get going, uh, our uh, readers for the graduate names are going to be Felicia Ellison and Jersey Fluid. Please bear with them. They've been practicing all morning on names. They're much better at me than I am at it, so um, I think they're going to do a better job and I'll take any attention off of them if I need to. Um, one thing that I think is important before we start this is for you guys to realize what kind of community you come from and how much you mean to this community. And like a lot of people said, uh, Miss Cravens particularly, I think Ryan, Hannah, and Ryan both hinted at it as well. Uh, life is very cyclical and you never know uh, when you're going to come back together, when you're going to be in a place that you told everybody you would never come back to. Um, so I'd very quickly like to do something before we start this, just so you guys get some kind of perspective on what's going on here. If everybody in attendance could, if you graduated from Bonners Ferry High School, could you please stand up? you to reconsider <laughs> and realize there's always time to prove yourself wrong. So Felicia and Jersey, if you guys would come up here and get going. We have our superintendent, Gary Flieger, and one of our school board members and a parent, Ms. Tess Ray, here to hand out diplomas. If you guys would remember that you're all going to stand up on my cue and sit down as a row on my cue, and when you receive your diploma, if you would look straight down this line, we have some people taking pictures. Remember, it's very simple and cheesy. You shake a hand and you smile, and then you walk along this line of people and give a bunch of hugs. So, thanks, thank you. Brady Bateman. Yay! She's South African and plans to study education at BYU. 
de las Americas to study culinary arts and gastronomy. Christopher Brian Sabin. He will be studying athletic training at Treasure Valley Community College. Seamus Shamrock Ski. He will take his general studies at Lewis and Clark State College. Carson Kenneth Colby is appointing to join the Navy and work in military police. Bryce Clendell Nelson. He is planning to join the workforce and eventually open his own business. Dalton Lee Newcastle. Colton James Thule Coon. He will be joining the workforce. Amar James Fisher is planning to attend NIC. Catherine Eliason will be studying photography and business at North Idaho College. Miranda Rose Wake will be studying nursing at North Idaho College. Haley Jean Wake, she will be attending Lewis Clark, Lewis Clark State College and studying secondary education and social, social studies. Michaela Elise Anthony Worley will be attending NIC and become a registered nurse. Caitlin Marie Onslaught. She plans on attending Calvary Chapel Bible College and obtain an associate's degree in biblical studies. major in fishery resource where one day she hopes to help repopulate burbot and sturgeon. Courtney Leanne Fasha. She will be joining the workforce in hopes of opening a small retail business in music and coffee shop. Jennica Coral Branson is planning to attend North Idaho College. Alyssa McKenzie Hopson. Awesome? She is planning to go to Boise State University to study occupational therapy with a minor in psychology. Victoria Ashley Smith. She will now attend North Idaho College to obtain her nursing license. Isabella Jean Bennett will be attending North Idaho College this fall. Kiana May Higgins is planning to start her education at NIC in General Studies. Mason Joe Eby will be attending Lewis Park State College studying natural sciences. Christopher Jerry Debris will be studying graphic design at Boise State University. Grace Elizabeth Dethero. Elizabeth Kramer. She plans to study, start her study of education. 
education at North Idaho College. Sierra Lynn Brown. She's planning for, to study elementary education at North Idaho College. Slater Randall Copley will be attending NIC's Workforce Training Center to become an electrician apprentice. Jada Noel Schnelli. She will study her general studies at the University of Idaho. Jaden Ann Bennett will be attending Rosalind Clark State College to obtain a degree in criminal justice. Jordan Ann Bennett will be attending boot camp at the United States Marine Corps this year. Bailey Alexandra Jenkins is attending the University of Montana to study business administration with a minor in political science. Mariah Corin Roy will be starting her secondary education at NIC and transferred to the University of Hawaii. Alan Alberto Rios. <laughs> Maria Perez Giza will be attending, will be working at the Elk Mountain Farms. Lucas Mendez Mendez plans on working at Elk Mountain Farms. Tyga Baldemera De Long. John Stone plans to attend Boise State University to study physical therapy or radiology. Payson Walker Pluitt will be attending BYUI and study secondary education with a minor in business. Griffin Blake Park plans to join the workforce by working at EL. Austin Hunter Fairchild. Hook. We'll be attending the University of Accounting with a minor in English. Nicholas Magdalena will be attending the University of Cassandra Elizabeth Steen is planning to attend Lewis and Clark State College and study social work and addiction studies. Ashlyn Dawn Hiddle is planning to study Tyler James Beezer plans to go on a two-year church mission and then attend BYUI to pursue a career, a career in law. Riley Jesse Allen Sandler. Nathan Owens plans to serve a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and then attend BYU. Joseph Bradley Swanson will study diesel mechanics at Utah State University. Sebastian Matthew David Gracie Lynn Jones is planning to study Greek law at an NIC. Myla May McKitney is attending NIC to become a certified medical lab technician.
Hunter Hiram Hyatt. We'll be attending NIC to study these on the finals. Christian Tanner Navarro will be joining the Air Force. Shiloh Stephen Thomas will be working with his dad in the oil fields in Texas. Malin Tavian Worley plans to enter the workforce and find work. Megan Beloved Chacon is enlisting in the Air Force in Special Operations. Micah Ray Whitaker will be attending the Air Force in James William Leach plans to attend LCSC and pursue a career as a physical assistant. Isaac Kenneth Vandekoevering is enrolled in an auto mechanics program at NIC. Hannah Marie Ritz plans to take a year off and then go to school. Retta Deanne Blackman. Callison will be attending North Idaho College to begin her study of elementary education with an emphasis in early childhood. <laughs> Nicholas Aaron Bertling will attend Lewis and Clark State College to major in business management. Shane Stephen Walker plans to attend Lewis and Clark State College and become a radiology technician. Auburn Victoria Burke is planning to become a dental assistant at Lewis and Clark State College. Ronnie Joseph Craig plans to attend the college to study criminal justice. Xavier George Boichi. Cody Michael Smith will study auto mechanics at the high Ryan Ian Mason plans to join the workforce. <laughs> Ashley Kaylee Bush is planning to attend Whitworth University where she will study elementary and special education. Jordan Allison Young will be attending University of Colorado. Elizabeth Sims will study mathematics and 
Anonymous at St. Olaf College and assumed a prayer in this week. Victor Ryan Ray will be attending the United States Air Force Academy studying systems and David Mooney Ripken is planning to attend the University of Idaho to study physics. Basil LaBarba plans to study welding at NIC and work in the bio and oil fields. Shane Corbin Economy will be joining the workforce in pursuing a <laughs> Jared Donald Fess will be attending Whitworth University. It's a drone, in case anybody's wondering what kind of big bug that is about the weather. <laughs> Just because I can, we're going to do this again. Everybody on my queue, I need you to stand up when I raise my hands. So, um, before we get going, we need to very symbolically move our tassel from the right to the left side. And before I introduce everybody to the graduating class of 2018, I get a chance to speak for a second, even if just briefly. I would encourage every one of you to remember that from today forward, you no longer have any excuses as to whether or not you had a decision to make or it was someone else's. Every day you get up, you get to decide if you go left, right, forward, or backward. You get to decide if your attitude to whatever the world throws at you is gonna be positive or negative. And you get to decide whether or not you wake up every day and remember that you get to be Badger Awesome if you choose to be. And you get to be the best if you choose to be. And you get to be yourself if you choose to be. So, without further ado, I'm very honored to introduce to all of you the graduating class of Bonners Ferry High School 2018.
Congratulations, sweetheart.